Romeo. Do you have a submit on Romeo and Juliet's death? Do you know how to stop? Caps about to be half bloods. Caps about to be Montagues. And they have this two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb at you, sir. You bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? No. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Benvolio! Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes. Better, sir. You lie. Draw, if you be men. Ah! 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 Fool, put up your swords. You know not what you do. What art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it to part these fools with me. But drawn and talk of peace. I hate the word as I hate hell. All Montagues and thee. I'm at the coward. What noise is this? I'll kill you. Give me my long sword. Watch, watch, I call you for a sword! Montague is calm and flourishes his blade in spite of me! How Billy Capulet! Only not let me go! I'm sorry, foot to seek a spot! Come to peace! Your failures of this neighbor stay soon, will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beast! That quenched the fire with your pernicious rage! With purple fountains issuing on your veins, or tearing up torture from those bloody hands, throw your besempered weapons to the ground, and hear the sentence of your moving prince! Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word. By thee, old Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall hear the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the mess depart away. You, Capulet, shall come along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to hear our further pleasure in this case. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who set this ancient quarrel new approach? Speak, niece, were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary and yours. Close fighting, ere I did approach, I drew to part them. 
In the instant came the fiery Tybalt, with his sword prepared, which, as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds, till the prince came who parted either part. Where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad am I he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad where underneath the grove of Sycamore, that westward rooteth from the city side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me, and stole into the covert of the wood. Many a morning hath he there been seen with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew. Noble uncle, do you know the cause? I can neither know of it nor learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself and many other friends. Could we but learn from whence his sorrow grows, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes, so please you, step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. Come, madam, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ay, me. Sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? It's having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor, where I am in love. Alas. That love, so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Last that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Oh me, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, oh brawling love, oh loving hate, still waking sleep, that's not what it is. This. Love feel I that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz I'd rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart suppression. Aye, such as love's transgression. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo, he is some other way. Tell me in sadness who is that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. Well, not that you'll miss. She'll not be it with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit. She is too wise, too fair, wisely too fair, to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way. And farewell, my cousin. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I, and penalty alike, tis not hard, I think, for men as old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived the odd so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? And saying o'er what I've said before, my child is yet a stranger in this world. Let two more summers with her in their pride, ere we think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she your happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early made. The earth hath swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her gentle Paris, get her heart. Her will to my consent is but a part, and she agree within her choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, where I invited many a guest, such as I love, and you, I'm on the store. One more most welcome makes my number more at my poor house. Look her all, and I'll see in her whose merit most shall be. Go, Sirrah, trudge about, and find those persons out whose names are written there. And to them say, welcome to my house on their pleasure stay. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound, more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented and gutting, good fellow. God gee gotten. You never listen to me. What are you even talking about? I pray, about? sir, can you read? Why, my own 
fortune in my misery. Perhaps you've learned it without book, but I pray, can you read anything you see? I if I know the letters and the language. Yea, say honestly, rest you, Mary. Stay, fellow, I can read. Okay. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, County Anselme and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow of Bertravio, Signor Placentio, Mercutio, and her brother Valentine. My uncle Capulet, my fair niece Rosaline, whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great, rich Capulet. And be you not of the house of Montagues, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulets, sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I will show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. My daughter, call her forth to me. I bade her come. What? Lamb! What? Ladybird! God forbid! Where's this girl? What, Juliet? Oh no, who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Again, I have remembered me. Thou's here on council. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Eighth, I can tell her age unto an hour. How long is it now, Suzanne and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age? Well, Suzanne is with God. She was too good for me, but as I said, on La Miss Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry, I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now eleven years, I never shall forget it. For out of all the days upon the year, and since that day, and since that time, it is eleven years. For even the day before she broke her brow, and then my husband, God be with his soul, uh, a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, dost thou fall upon thy face? The pretty wench slept crying and said, I, I warrant I shall live a thousand years. I never shall forget it. Enough of this. I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam, yet I cannot choose but laugh. To think it should leave crying and say, I. Peace, I have done. God mark thee with his grace, thou wast the prettiest babe ere I nurse, and I might live to see thee married once I have my wish. Mary, thou marriest the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, Donna Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. Well, Think of marriage now, young and in you. Here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my account, I was your mother much upon his years that you are now made. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks for his love. A man, young lady, lady, such a man, as all the world, why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower in faith, a very flower. <laughs> Say you. Can you love the gentleman? This night you will behold him at our feast. Read over the volume of young Paris face and find delight right there with beauty's pen. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. No less, nay bigger, women grow by men. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris love? 
I'll look to like if looking liking move, but no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. What? <laughs> Madam, the guests are come. Supper is served up. You called the young lady asked for? I've hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. We follow thee. Juliet, the count stays. Go, oh, girls, seek happy nights to happy days. I'm not to this ambling. Being this heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so it stakes me to the ground I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. For love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love. Too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It's too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. Come, knock and enter, and no sooner in but every man betake him to his legs. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game is near so fair and I am done. Why, may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie in bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mob hath been with you. <laughs> She's the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes made of long spider's legs, the cover of the wings of grasshoppers, the traces of the smallest spider's web, the collars of the moonshine's watery beams, her whip of cricket's bone, the lash of film, her wagoner, a small gray coated knot, not so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out of mind the fairy's coachmakers. And in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Sometimes she driveth over a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches and buscadas, Spanish blades of pelts five fathom deep. And then Anon drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes and being thus frightened, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very Mab that plats the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks and foul sluttish hairs which once untangled much misfortune bodes. This is the hag when mates lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them woman of good carriage. This is peace, she. Peace, peace, your peace, th thou talks of nothing. <laughs> True, I talk of dreams which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, but she that hath steers of my course, direct my sail on lusty gals. Strike, drum. <sighs> Their toes unplayed with corns, we'll have a bout with you. All are welcome, gentlemen, come, musicians play. A hall, a hall, give room and foot it, girls.
it is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Beauty too rich for use and for earth too dear. Did my heart love till now? Forswear at sights, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier. Ah, uh, what how now, kinsman? Where fort storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague. Our foe, a villain has come hither in spite to scorn our solemnity this night. Young Romeo is it? Tis he that. Villain Romeo. Content be, gentle cuz, let him be. He bears him like a portly gentleman to say truth. Verona brags to him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. In front of all the wealth of town here in my own home, we will not do him disparagement. Therefore, take no note of him. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. <sighs> what good man boy I say he shall? Am I the master here or you? Go to. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. Be <sighs> quiet. Oh, more <sighs> life, more life for shame. I'll make you quiet. Ah, oh, what cheerly my heart. I will withdraw, for this intrusion now seeming sweet shall convert to bitter gall. If I profane, with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready, stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this, for saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. I have not saints' lips and holy palmers too. Aye, pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then dear saint, but lips do it, hands do they pray. Grant thou, lest my faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. <laughs> Thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged. Upon my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from thy lips, oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. Madam. Your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary, bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house, and a good lady, and a wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. She a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Romeo, away be gone. The sport is at the best. So I fear the more is my unrest. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? The son and heir of old Tibero. What's he now that is going out of door? Mary, that I think be on Petruchio. What's he that follows there that would not dance? I know not. Go. Ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love, it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned even now of when I danced with all. Anon, anon, come let's away, the strangers all are gone. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, Dolores, and find thy center out. Romeo! 
My cousin Romeo, he is wise, and on my lie hath stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and leaped this orchard wall. Call, good Mercutio. Nay, I'll conjure to. Romeo, humor, madman, <laughs> passion, lover. Aww. Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes that in thy likeness thou appear to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. T'would anger him that were some spite. My invocation is fair and honest and in his mistress's name. I conjure only but to raise up him. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then, for tis in vain to seek him here, which means not to be found. She jests at scars that never felt a wound. Soft. Soft! What? Light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vest delivery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off! <sighs> it is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars and all of heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till their return. What if her eyes were there, and they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven through the air region would stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? Ah, oh, that I were a glove upon that hand that I may touch that cheek. I mean... She speaks! Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet so. Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. <laughs> call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I will never be Romeo. What man art thou that thus be screened at night so stumblest on my counsel? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Either, fair saint, if either of thee dislike. How camest thou hither, and tell me wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. My love's white wings that are our purse these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. 
and what love can do, that dare love attempt. Therefore, thy kinsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? By love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot, yet were thou as far as the vast shore, washed with the farthest sea, I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowst the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment, dost thou love me? I know that wilt say I, and I will take thy word, yet if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. At lover's perjuries, they say, Jove laughs. Gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, then pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkst I'm too quickly won, then I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else, not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light, but trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove to be more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess, but that thou overheardest ere I was where my true love's passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. My heart's dear love. Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning which doth cease to be, or one can say it lightens. Sweet, good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. As sweet repose and rest, come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it for what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Lady Bird. I hear some noise within. Dear love adieu, anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little, I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard. Being at night, all this is but a dream, too flattering, sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose, marriage, send me word tomorrow. By one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the right, and all thy fortunes at thy foot, I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam. I come along, but if thou means not well, I do beseech thee. Madam. By and by I come to seize thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow I will send. So thrives my soul. A thousand times, good night. A thousand times the worst to want thy light. Love goes towards love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love towards school with heavy looks. Psst. Romeo. Psst. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet song lovers tongues by night like softest music to attending ears. Romeo. My dear. At what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand here remembering how I love thy company. I'll still stand to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. Tis almost morning I would have thee gone. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow.
Sleep upon thine eyes. Peace in thy breast. <laughs> when I were sleep in peace, so sweet to rest. Hence I will go to my ghostly father's cell, his help to crave, my dear hap to tell. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. A care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, but where care lodges sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs, there golden sleep doth reign. Therefore, thy earliness doth me assure, thou art aroused by some distemperature. Or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. At last is true, the sweet arrest was mine. I'd pardon sin. Was that with Rosaline? Rosaline? My ghostly father, no. I forgot that name, and that name's woe. <laughs> That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee ere thou askest me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me. That's by me wounded both our remedies. Within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. <sighs> Holy Saint Francis, what change is here? Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their minds. Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it doth not taste. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou ties me off for loving Rosaline. Doting, not loving, pupil mine. And bays me bury love. Not in a grave, to lay one in another out to have. Pray thee, chide not she whom I love now. Doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well. <sighs> but come, young waverer. Come, go with me. In one respect, all thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancors to pure love. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste! Hastily and slow, they stumble that run fast.
the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. Ah, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dared. Alas, poor Romeo's already dead. Stabbed with the white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart, cleft with the blind bowboy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing Prick's song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. Rest me his minimum rest, one, two, and third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist. A do. List. A gentleman of the very first house, of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Posado, the Punto Reverso, the hi -ya. What? The pox of such antic, lisping, affecting fantasticos. These new tuners of accents. By Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man. Here comes Romeo, <laughs> here good. comes Romeo. Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French lop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. Tell me, what counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip can you not conceive. Hard and good, Mercutio, my business was great. And in such a case as mine, one may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say. Such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hams. Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits fate! Switch and spur, switch and spur, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase I have done, for thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? I was never there for anything if thou was not there for the goose. I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Yeah, good goose, bite not. <laughs> Why is not this better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love is like a great natural that runs falling up and down to hide his bubble in a hole. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair. Thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. Here's goodly gear. A sail, a sail. Two, to a shirt and a smock. God ye good morrow, gentles all. God ye good and fair, gentlewoman. Gentles, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you. But young Romeo may be older when you found him than he was when you sought him. Huh. Funny. I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. You say well. Yay, it's the worst. Well, oh. very well took a faith. Wisely, wisely. Uh, if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Ooh. I will follow you. <laughs> Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell, lady. Oh, oh, lady. Oh, oh, lady. Now, before God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. I pray you, sir, a word. And as I showed you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, if ye shall lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a gross kind of behavior, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you deal double with her, truly, were an ill thing to be offered any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I, I protest unto thee. Good heart and a faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she'll be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse, thou dost not mark me? Well, tell her, sir, that you do protest, which I take a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. And there, in Friar Lawrence's cell, she be shrived and married. Here's for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not a penny. Go, I say you shall. This afternoon, sir, she shall be there. Farewell, be trusty, now quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Now God in heaven bless thee, hark you, sir. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times.
The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts, which ten times glide faster than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind swift cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine to twelve is three long hours, yet she has not come. Has she affections and warm youthful blood, she'd be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. But old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh God, she comes, oh honey nurse, what news hast thou met with him? Oh Lord, why look'st thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shames the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache! What a john have I had! Would thou add'st my bones and I thy news? Nay, come speak, I pray thee, good, good nurse, speak. You see what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied as good or bad. Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man, Romeo. No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, and his leg excels all men's, and for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What have you dined at home? No. No, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches! What a head of I! It beats as if it should break into twenty pieces. My back. Other side. Oh, my back, my back. The shrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. If faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest! Your love says like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Mary, come, I trow. Is this the poultice I get for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. You're such a coil come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to the church, I must another way, by the which your lover must climb the bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge and toil of your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, out to dinner, hie to the cell. Hi to I fortune, honest nurse, farewell. <laughs> So smile the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Here comes the lady. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else is his thanks too much. Come, come with me and we will make, sh make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone until Holy Church incorporate two in one. <laughs> 